Okay, in our previous videos, we have talked really about these confidence intervals and specifically how they were two-tailed intervals. So if we had our confidence interval being centered about X bar, right, we went up and down a certain range. This was our margin of error. And this was alpha divided by two, and this guy was alpha divided by two. And we called those two-tailed confidence intervals. Why? Because we put error in both of the tails. Uh, but sometimes uh, we might not want to use two-tailed. We might want to throw all of that error to one side uh, or the other. And so like, for example, with our tree example with super tallest, Maybe I just want to be that the, I want to be 95% confident that the true mean height is at least some value. Or maybe I want to be 95% confident that these trees are no more than some value. And those are one-tailed uh, examples where it's just to one side or the other. And they are perfectly valid and we can totally handle them. We just have to modify our equations just a little bit. So if we're doing a two-tailed confidence interval, you're going to notice that it's going to be plus or minus, and then the margin of error. Well, when we do our one-tailed confidence intervals, it depends upon what we are doing. So let me go ahead and kind of erase this. And we've got two versions that we can do. We can either do plus or we can do minus. And there's just one alteration with our, our margin of error calculation. They stay the same. Uh, all we have to do is we just now, we're not throwing the error into two sides. And so we just erase out our alpha, or, or divided by two on the alpha. Uh, we now throw all 5% of this error to one side or to the other. So now our, our confidence interval is going to be, uh, how do I want to do this? We'll do it kind of like this. So in here it's either going to be plus or minus. So we get to choose one or the other. So I'll, I'll show how we do both of them, um, but this is kind of a way so that I don't have to write it out like four times, uh, you know, two for the z's and then two for the t's. We just know that it's going to be following this x. We're either going to do plus the margin of error or we're going to do minus uh, the margin of error. It's not going to be uh, both. So maybe I'll put, I don't know, some dividing lines between this thing. So you get to choose one or the other. So you get to go down this way or you get to go up that way to minus. You don't do both. With the two tailed it was plus and minus and this one is going to be plus or the minus. Okay so let's start off with saying maybe I want to state that these trees, maybe I want to say 95 percent confident That, that the super tallest is at least this many feet. All right, so we can do this two ways. One, if we know the standard deviation. Two, if we don't know the standard deviation. Uh, but besides that, like, this thing is identical. So let's go ahead and write out this confidence interval again. So we know that this confidence interval is still going to be 95%. And this one we're going to do, uh, because we're saying that it's at least some value, we know that it's going to be our calculation comma infinity, right? It could be as tall, there's no edge to the right side because we're saying that it's at least so tall. So we've got to find some minimum value that we're actually interested in. So if we want to know some minimum value, let's draw this out. And if I know that I go to infinity over here, 
from my x bar, I know that if I want to say I'm 95% confident that the super tallest is at least some value, I know that I need to go like here, shade all of that area, that's going to be 95%. So I need to go below from where x bar is. All right, so we're going to do x bar minus our new margin of error calculation. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and start off. I'll do it pink so that we can kind of keep these. I'll do the pink for if we know what the standard deviation and blue if we don't know what the standard deviation is. Okay, and I'm just going to call this, just for simplicity, we'll call it the lower bound. And let's start off with pink. So pink lower bound is just going to be, you know, we need to calculate out first x bar, still our 400, and we're going to do minus our margin of error. So we've got this z alpha. When we go in and we use our quantiles and we calculate this out, it's going to be 1.64 multiplied by standard error. Nice thing is standard error stays the same. So it is going to be 4.4. One, one. And when we do this, we're going to get 400 minus, and that guy is margin of error, 6.76. 6. And when we actually calculate this out, it's going to be 393.2. I, I did some rounding, but it's basically 393.2. All right, so that's if we know what this population standard deviation is. Uh, if we don't know what the population standard deviation is, this guy, let's go to blue, where our lower bound would be equal to 400 minus. Now we had to get a new T. Remember, degrees of freedom, let me put that back up. Degrees of freedom still equals N minus 1. So it would be 36 degrees of freedom in this scenario. And with an alpha of 0.05, our t is 1.69 multiplied by our standard error. Same standard error as from last time. So this is going to be 3.29. So this is going to be 400 minus 5.55, which gives us 394.4. All right, so remember the difference between the pink and the blue. Pink is if we know what the population standard deviation is. Sigma, if we knew what this omnipotent being happened to know. But most of the time we're going to be using blue because we have no idea what the population standard deviation is. And so we wind up using S. Now if you notice, both of these are actually really close to one another. And they should be because you know, our sample size is actually pretty big. Um, we're doing actually pretty well there. So what we could say is that like we are 95% confident that the super tallest tree is at least 393 feet tall. Or uh, if we're using the blue, this sample standard deviation, we can say at least 394 feet tall. Uh, and the only difference is like how we calculate out the distance from the mean. Uh, this t still kind of interprets the same way as our z distribution. It's the number of standard deviations away from the mean that we actually are. Okay, so that's cool. There are two different ways that we can do it. Now, what if instead of looking for the super tallest is at least this tall? Well, what if instead we want to say that is no more? Let's put that up. All right, so if we do know more, let's kind of draw a picture of that guy. We want it could be smaller, but it's no more than this size, and we want to get this guy down. So we need to go above our, sorry, x bar. So we're going to go plus this margin of error. Well, the handy thing is, is that if we do that, we know that the lower end is going to be negative infinity. And the upper end is going to be our upper bound. OK, so let's change this from being lower bound to being upper bound. And let's change this guy from being lower bound to being upper bound. And there really isn't any difference. 
except for one thing. We are going to go plus and plus, and we will go plus and plus. So basically, instead of doing minus, we now do plus. The rest of the calculations are identical. It's just now we're doing a uh, we're doing a one-tailed on the other side. Okay. So last thing that we got to do is we got to just recalculate out what our heights would be. Let's go ahead and erase that out. And let's go ahead and erase this guy out. And let's do 405.55. And here we go. 406.76. And there we go. That we are 95% confident that the super tallest is no more than, if we know what the sample sta or what, what the population standard deviation is, to no more than 406 feet. If we only knew what the sample standard deviation was, we'd say that it's no more than 405 feet. So the difference between whether we're doing a one-tailed from the upper end or one-tailed from the lower end, it's just we're doing one or the other, plus or the minus. And the only difference from like our two-tailed confidence intervals is that instead of doing alpha divided by two, we just put in alpha. So now we know how to do one-tail and two-tail confidence intervals for the mean.